Welcome back to another episode of our podcast. Today, we're diving into a topic that's so important for both personal and professional life, effective time management. If you've ever felt like you don't have enough time in the day, this episode is for you. Yes, mastering time management is key to achieving your goals and reducing stress. And as always, while you listen, you'll improve your English listening and communication skills. Learning English through real conversations helps you gain new information, expand your vocabulary, and become more confident in everyday communication. That's right, and today's topic is not only useful, but also relevant to many situations, from work to school to your personal life. So, let's get started. Time management is essential because it helps us prioritize tasks. When we manage our time well, we can achieve more in less time. That means less stress and more productivity. What's your take, Jennifer? I completely agree, Thomas. It's not just about being busy, but about being effective with the time we have. Time management lets us focus on what really matters and helps us avoid last-minute panic. Yes, and when you plan your day, you can fit in important tasks and still have time to relax. So it's all about balance. I always recommend starting with a to-do list. Do you do that too, Jennifer? Definitely. A to-do list helps me stay organized. Without one, it's easy to get distracted. Plus, it's satisfying to check off tasks as you complete them. One of the biggest challenges in time management is procrastination. We all do it sometimes, right? Putting off tasks makes them seem bigger than they are. How do you deal with procrastination, Thomas? I try to break big tasks into smaller, manageable steps. That way, they don't feel overwhelming. I also use the two-minute rule. If something takes less than two minutes, I do it right away. It really helps. That's a great strategy. Another challenge is distractions, especially with phones and social media. I often set specific times for checking emails or social media so I can stay focused on work. Absolutely. Time blocking is another helpful technique where you dedicate specific time slots for certain tasks. It keeps you on track and reduces the temptation to get distracted. Planning ahead is key for effective time management. I like to plan my week on Sunday evenings. It gives me a clear picture of what needs to be done. How about you, Thomas? I do something similar. Planning ahead lets you anticipate challenges and gives you enough time to make adjustments if things change. For example, if I know a project deadline is coming up, I make sure I've set aside time to work on it every day. Exactly. It also helps to set realistic goals. If we overestimate what we can do, we end up feeling rushed and stressed. It's better to be realistic and focus on what's truly important. There are so many tools available to help with time management. I personally use a digital calendar to keep track of my appointments and deadlines. It sends me reminders so I never forget anything. What tools do you use, Jennifer? I love using a physical planner. Writing things down helps me remember them better. I also use apps like Trello or Sina to organize tasks and collaborate with others when needed. It's a great way to stay on top of projects. That's a great combination. The important thing is to find what works best for you. Whether it's a digital tool or a paper planner, it should make your life easier, not more complicated. One of the hardest things about managing time is learning to say no. Sometimes we overcome it ourselves because we want to be helpful, but this can lead to burnout. Have you experienced this, Thomas? Oh, definitely. It's important to understand your limits. Saying no doesn't mean you're being rude. It means you're prioritizing your time. It's about knowing when you have too much on your plate. Exactly. It's better to say no than to agree to something and not be able to give your best. Setting boundaries is an essential part of time management. When it comes to managing time, not all tasks are created equal. Prioritizing tasks based on importance and urgency helps you tackle the most critical things first. How do you prioritize your tasks, Jennifer? 
I use the Eisenhower matrix, which separates tasks into four categories, urgent and important, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and neither. It really helps me focus on what matters most. That's a great system. I do something similar by labeling tasks as high, medium, or low priority. It's all about figuring out what needs your attention now and what can wait. A common mistake people make when trying to manage their time is not taking breaks. Rest is crucial for staying productive. Do you schedule breaks, Thomas? Absolutely. I use the Pomodoro technique work for 25 minutes, then take a 5-minute break. It keeps me focused, and I come back to tasks feeling refreshed. Do you have a break routine? I like to take short walks or do some light stretching during breaks. It helps clear my mind, especially if I've been sitting for too long. When we're overwhelmed with too many tasks, it's hard to know where to start. How do you manage that, Thomas? I take a deep breath and break down what I need to do into smaller steps. Starting with the easiest task can build momentum. How do you handle it, Jennifer? I do something similar. I also remind myself that it's okay not to finish everything in one day. Setting realistic expectations is key. Having a solid daily routine can make a huge difference when managing your time. It sets the pace for the day and ensures you get important tasks done. Do you follow a specific routine, Jennifer? I do. I start my day with the same morning routine, exercise, breakfast, and then planning out my top tasks for the day. It helps me stay focused and productive. How about you? I like to keep my morning structured as well. I find that once I get the important things done early, the rest of the day flows more smoothly. A routine reduces decision fatigue so you don't waste time thinking about what to do next. Exactly. And routines aren't just for work. Having a good evening routine, like winding down without screens or setting up your workspace for the next day, can also make a big impact on your productivity. Interruptions are a big challenge when trying to stick to a schedule. Whether it's a phone call or a sudden request from a coworker, they can throw off your focus. How do you handle interruptions, Thomas? It's tough, but I try to minimize interruptions by setting specific times to check emails or return calls. I also communicate my boundaries with others, letting them know when I'm in a focused work session. How about you? I do the same. I also use noise-canceling headphones when I really need to concentrate. It's important to let people know when you're available and when you're in focus mode. Yes, setting those boundaries is key. Interruptions will happen, but managing how we react to them can make a big difference. While having a plan is important, being flexible is equally essential. Sometimes things don't go as expected, and we need to adapt. How flexible are you with your time, Thomas? I try to be flexible without losing sight of my main goals. If something unexpected comes up, I'll adjust my schedule but still make sure I meet my priorities for the day. What about you? I'm the same way. It's important not to be too rigid. Life is unpredictable and we need to leave room for adjustments. I always schedule some buffer time in my day just in case things take longer than planned. That's a great approach. Being flexible also reduces stress when things don't go exactly as planned. Time management isn't just about daily tasks. It's also about working towards long-term goals. How do you approach long-term planning, Jennifer? I like to break down my long-term goals into smaller milestones. It makes them feel more achievable and helps me track my progress. How do you handle long-term goals? I do something similar. I set yearly goals and then divide them into monthly and weekly targets. This way, I can keep myself accountable and stay on track without feeling overwhelmed by the bigger picture. Exactly. It's all about consistency. Small steps taken regularly can lead to big achievements over time. Time management also plays a major role in maintaining a healthy work-life balance. We all need time for ourselves, our families, and our hobbies. How do you balance work and personal life, Thomas?
I try to set clear boundaries between work and personal time. For example, I avoid checking work emails after a certain time in the evening. What's your strategy, Jennifer? I do something similar. I also schedule time for myself, like going for a walk or spending time with family. It's important to recharge, otherwise, burnout is inevitable. That's true. Taking time for yourself not only improves your personal well-being, it also makes you more productive when you return to work. Sometimes, time management means knowing when to delegate tasks to others. Do you delegate often, Thomas? Yes, especially when I have too much on my plate. Delegating tasks allows me to focus on what I do best. How about you, Jennifer? I agree. Delegating can be hard because you might feel like you're losing control. But it's actually a great way to free up time for more important work. Trusting others to help is part of being an effective time manager. Absolutely. Delegating also allows others to develop their skills, which benefits the entire team in the long run. Staying motivated is essential for good time management. What keeps you motivated, Jennifer? I stay motivated by reminding myself of the bigger picture what I'm working towards. Also, celebrating small wins along the way keeps me going. How do you stay motivated? I'm the same way. I set many goals throughout the day and reward myself when I hit them, whether it's taking a break or treating myself to something I enjoy. Yes, those little rewards can make a big difference. And it's important to remember that motivation doesn't come automatically. Sometimes we have to create it by setting up a productive environment. Our mindset plays a big role in how well we manage our time. If we believe we can manage our time effectively, we're more likely to do so. What's your mindset when it comes to time management, Thomas? I try to stay positive and focus on progress rather than perfection. If I don't finish everything on my to-do list, I don't beat myself up. Instead, I look at what I accomplished and plan better for the next day. How do you approach it? I'm the same way. I remind myself that time management is a skill. And like any skill, it improves with practice. The key is to be kind to yourself and keep moving forward. Exactly. A positive mindset makes time management less of a chore and more of a tool for achieving your goals. Using the right tools can significantly enhance your time management skills. I rely on digital calendars and task management apps to keep my schedule organized. What about you, Jennifer? Do you have any favorite tools? Definitely, I use a combination of a digital calendar for appointments and a to-do list app to track my tasks. It really helps me visualize my day and prioritize effectively. I also enjoy writing things down on paper sometimes. It helps me remember better. Do you think digital tools are more effective than traditional methods? That's an interesting point. I think it depends on the individual. Some people thrive on digital tools while others prefer the tactile experience of writing things down. I believe using a mix of both can be very beneficial. It's all about finding what works best for you and adapting as necessary. Absolutely. The key is to experiment with different tools until you find the right combination that helps you stay organized and focused. Setting clear priorities is crucial for effective time management. How do you determine which tasks are most important to tackle first, Thomas? I use the Eisenhower Matrix, which categorizes tasks into four quadrants based on urgency and importance. This helps me focus on what truly matters. How do you prioritize your tasks, Jennifer? I often list my tasks at the start of each day and rank them based on deadlines and importance. I find that tackling high-priority items first gives me a sense of accomplishment and motivates me for the rest of the day. That makes sense. It's all about managing energy levels as well. Starting with the most important tasks when your energy is high can lead to greater productivity. Procrastination can really hinder effective time management. Do you struggle with procrastination, Thomas? How do you overcome it? Yes, I've been guilty of procrastinating, especially on tasks I find overwhelming. To combat this, I break tasks into smaller, manageable chunks and set short deadlines for each part. 
This makes it less daunting. What strategies do you use to avoid procrastination? I totally relate. I also use the Pomodoro technique working in focused sprints of 25 minutes, followed by a short break. This helps me stay focused and makes the tasks feel less overwhelming. That's a great technique. It creates a sense of urgency while giving you breaks to recharge. A good approach can change your mindset towards tasks and keep procrastination at bay. Time management can also play a significant role in reducing stress. When you have a clear plan, you're less likely to feel overwhelmed. How do you think good time management can alleviate stress, Jennifer? Good time management allows for better control over our tasks and deadlines. When I plan my day, I know exactly what to expect which reduces anxiety. I also make sure to include relaxation time in my schedule to unwind. Exactly. It's vital to balance work with relaxation. When we manage our time effectively, we can prevent burnout and maintain a healthy mindset. And that can lead to increased productivity. It's amazing how effective time management can contribute to overall well-being. We all make mistakes when managing our time, have you learned any important lessons from past time management errors, Thomas? Definitely. I've learned that overcommitting is a recipe for disaster. Early on, I would take on too many projects at once, leading to stress and incomplete tasks. Now, I'm more realistic about my capabilities. How about you, Jennifer? I've had similar experiences. I used to underestimate how long tasks would take which would leave me feeling rushed and stressed. Now, I try to give myself more time than I think I'll need. It's important to adjust expectations based on experience. That's a valuable lesson. Learning from our mistakes and adjusting our strategies can lead to more effective time management in the long run. Having someone to hold you accountable can significantly improve time management. Do you have an accountability partner, Thomas? Yes, I do. Sharing my goals with a friend or colleague helps me stay on track. We check in with each other regularly, which motivates me to stick to my plans. How about you, Jennifer? I also find accountability helpful. I share my goals with a mentor, which pushes me to meet my deadlines. It's encouraging to have someone who supports you and can provide constructive feedback. Exactly. Having that support system can keep us motivated and accountable. It's amazing how much more committed we feel when we know someone else is invested in our success. Our environment can greatly affect our ability to manage time effectively. What's your workspace like, Thomas? Does it help you focus? I try to keep my workspace tidy and organized. A cluttered environment can lead to distractions and make it harder to concentrate. I also make sure to have minimal distractions, like turning off unnecessary notifications. How about you? I agree. A clean workspace is essential. I also personalize my space with motivating quotes and plants, which help create a positive atmosphere. It's all about creating an environment that fosters productivity. Exactly. When our environment is supportive of our goals, it becomes easier to manage our time effectively. Conducting time audits can reveal where our time goes and help us manage it better. Have you ever done a time audit, Thomas? Yes, I've tracked my activities for a week to see how much time I spent on various tasks. It was eye-opening. I realized I was spending too much time on unimportant tasks. What did you find out from your time audit, Jennifer? I discovered that I was spending a lot of time on distractions, like social media. Now, I set specific times for checking social media to limit those distractions and focus on what truly matters. That's a smart strategy. Time audits can be really enlightening and can help us make necessary adjustments for better time management. Self-care is crucial when it comes to effective time management. How do you incorporate self-care into your busy schedule, Thomas? I prioritize self-care by blocking time in my calendar for activities that recharge me, like exercising or spending time with family. It's vital to take care of ourselves to maintain productivity. What about you, Jennifer?
I make sure to schedule downtime just like any other important meeting. Whether it's reading a book or going for a walk, those moments of self-care help me return to my work with renewed energy and focus. Absolutely. Taking care of our mental and physical health is essential for effective time management. It's all interconnected. It's essential to recognize the signs of burnout in ourselves. Have you ever experienced burnout, Thomas? Yes, I have. I ignored the early signs and pushed through, which only made it worse. Now, I pay attention to my energy levels and emotions, and I know when to take a step back. How about you? I've been there too. I learned that when I start feeling overwhelmed, it's a sign I need to reassess my schedule and take a break. Prevention is key to avoiding burnout. Exactly. Being proactive about our mental health can prevent burnout and keep us functioning at our best. Time management isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. How do you adapt your strategies to fit your changing circumstances, Thomas? I remain flexible and regularly reassess my strategies. If I find something isn't working, I'm open to trying new techniques. It's important to adapt based on what's effective for you at any given time. What about you, Jennifer? I do the same. I constantly evaluate what's working and what's not. Sometimes a simple change in routine can yield better results. Exactly. Being adaptable is essential in our fast-paced world and it can lead to better time management. Technology can be a double-edged sword when it comes to time management. How do you find balance with technology, Thomas? I use technology to my advantage, but I also set limits. For example, I use apps to manage tasks, but I avoid endless scrolling on social media during work hours. How do you manage technology, Jennifer? I agree. I set specific times to check my phone and avoid distractions. Technology can help, but it's important to stay disciplined. Definitely. It's all about finding that balance to ensure technology enhances, rather than detracts from, our productivity. One of the things I've learned over time is the importance of setting realistic goals. It's easy to overestimate how much you can get done in a day, which leads to frustration when you don't meet those expectations. Do you think goal setting plays a big role in effective time management, Jennifer? Absolutely, Thomas. Setting realistic, attainable goals is crucial. I found that when I break larger projects into smaller, achievable tasks, it makes the whole process feel more manageable. This not only boosts productivity, but also gives me a sense of accomplishment as I check things off my list. Have you experienced this as well? Yes, definitely. I used to aim to high, thinking I could finish massive projects in a single day. But now, I've learned to divide tasks into smaller steps and give myself more time than I think I'll need. This prevents stress and allows for more flexibility. It's important to set goals that are challenging but not overwhelming, right? Exactly. You want goals that push you but are still within reach. The other thing to remember is to be kind to yourself when things don't go as planned. Time management isn't just about discipline. It's also about understanding your own limitations and adjusting when necessary. That's a great point, Jennifer. Sometimes we need to reevaluate our goals based on how the day is going. Flexibility is key to managing time effectively without feeling burned out. Building good habits is an essential part of managing time in the long run. Do you think that time management can eventually become second nature, Thomas? I do. Over time, I've developed habits that make time management a lot easier. Things like starting my day with a clear plan, taking regular breaks, and ending the day with a review of what I accomplished have become almost automatic. Habits form the foundation for long-term success, don't they? They really do. I found that once I've established a routine, I don't have to think as much about the specifics of managing time. It's more about following the habits I've built. For example, I always spend the first 10 minutes of my day setting priorities and checking my calendar. That small routine makes the entire day run more smoothly. Have you found certain habits particularly helpful in your routine? 
Yes, for sure. One habit that's been a game changer for me is doing a weekly review every Sunday night. I look back at what I accomplished the previous week and plan the upcoming one. It gives me a clear sense of direction and keeps me organized. Do you do something similar, Jennifer? I do. I have a Sunday routine too. Reflecting on what worked and what didn't is so important for continuous improvement. It's also a chance to reset and start the week with a fresh mindset. Habits like these not only save time but also reduce stress. Exactly. Once these habits are in place, time management feels less like a chore and more like an integrated part of your life. Delegation is another powerful time management strategy. It's impossible to do everything ourselves, and learning to delegate tasks can free up valuable time for more important priorities. How do you handle delegation, Jennifer? I used to struggle with delegation because I felt like I needed to control every aspect of a project. But over time, I realized that trusting others to take on certain tasks not only improves efficiency but also empowers them. Delegation allows me to focus on my strengths while others contribute theirs. Do you find delegation challenging, Thomas? I used to. Yes, like you. I felt like I had to do everything myself to ensure it was done right. But that mindset only leads to burnout. Now, I've learned to trust my team and delegate tasks that don't require my direct involvement. It's all about knowing which tasks are best handled by others and letting go of the need to micromanage. Exactly. It's also important to communicate clearly when delegating tasks. When people know what's expected of them, they're more likely to succeed, which in turn benefits everyone. Delegation isn't just about offloading work. It's about making sure tasks are completed efficiently by the right people. Absolutely. Delegating effectively not only saves time but also helps others grow in their roles. It's a win-win for both time management and team development. Taking regular breaks is something people often overlook when managing their time, but it's so important for maintaining productivity. How do you incorporate breaks into your routine, Thomas? I follow the Pomodoro technique where I work for 25 minutes and then take a 5-minute break. After for cycles, I take a longer break. It helps me stay focused during work sessions and prevents burnout. I used to think working longer without breaks would get more done, but it actually made me less efficient. What's your approach to taking breaks? I use a similar method. I also make sure my breaks are meaningful, like stepping outside for some fresh air or stretching. It's tempting to just check emails or social media during breaks, but I find that doing something that recharges me mentally or physically is much more effective. Breaks really help in maintaining focus and preventing fatigue, don't they? Exactly. I've learned that breaks aren't a waste of time. They actually make me more productive in the long run. Taking a moment to recharge helps keep energy levels up and ensures I can sustain focus throughout the day. Without breaks, the quality of my work tends to drop. I feel the same way. Pacing yourself with breaks not only improves productivity, but also leads to better quality work. It's important to listen to your body and mind and give yourself time to rest. Learning to say no is a critical aspect of time management. We often feel obligated to take on more than we can handle, which leads to stress and poor time management. How do you handle this, Jennifer? Do you find it hard to say no? Yes, I used to say yes to almost everything, thinking it would help me grow professionally. But I quickly realized that overcommitting was not sustainable. Now I evaluate each opportunity carefully, considering whether I have the time and energy to give it my best effort. It's about prioritizing what truly matters and letting go of what doesn't fit into your current goals. How have you learned it to say no, Thomas? It was definitely a challenge at first. I felt like I had to prove myself by taking on every opportunity that came my way. But over time, I learned that saying no allows me to focus on the tasks and projects that align with my priorities and values. It's a powerful tool for managing time and energy. 
Exactly. Saying no doesn't mean you're closing doors. It means you're focusing on the ones that matter most. And in the end, that leads to better results in both your personal and professional life. I couldn't agree more. It's all about recognizing your limits and making thoughtful decisions about where to invest your time and energy. At the end of each day, I like to take a few minutes to reflect on what I accomplished. It helps me feel more organized and ready for the next day. Do you have a similar practice, Thomas? Yes, I always end my day with a quick review of what I've achieved and what's left to be done. It gives me a sense of closure and allows me to plan the following day more effectively. How does reflection impact your time management, Jennifer? I find it incredibly helpful. Reflecting on the day allows me to see where I've been productive and where I need to improve. It's also a moment to celebrate small wins, which boosts motivation for the next day. Reflection is a simple yet powerful tool for continuous improvement in time management. Absolutely. It's a way to stay mindful of our progress and to make any necessary adjustments moving forward. Plus, it's a great way to close the day on a positive note, which makes it easier to unwind and recharge for the next day. One thing I've learned is that no matter how well you plan, unexpected events will happen. That's why I always try to build a buffer into my schedule. Do you do the same, Jennifer? Yes, definitely. I used to plan my day down to the minute, but then when something unexpected happened, it would throw off my entire schedule. Now, I leave some flexibility in my day to accommodate the unexpected. How do you create time buffers, Thomas? I try to schedule meetings or tasks with a bit of extra time around them. For example, if I think something will take an hour, I block out an hour and a half. This gives me breathing room in case things take longer than expected or if something urgent comes up. It's been a game changer for reducing stress. That's a great approach. Time buffers help ensure that one unplanned event doesn't derail your entire day. It's about managing your time in a way that accounts for both the expected and the unexpected. Exactly. Building flexibility into your schedule is key to staying on track and maintaining control over your time. Let's talk about tools and technology for time management. With so many apps and digital tools available, it's easier than ever to stay organized. Do you use any particular tools, Thomas? Yes, I rely on a couple of different apps to help manage my time. My main tool is a digital calendar where I can set reminders and block out time for specific tasks. I also use a task management app that lets me organize my to-do lists by priority. What about you, Jennifer? Do you have any favorite tools? I do. I use a combination of a calendar and a project management app. The calendar helps me stay on top of meetings and appointments. Well, the app lets me break down larger projects into smaller tasks. I also like using timers, especially when I'm following time blocking techniques like the Pomodoro method. It really helps me stay focused and productive. Do you feel like these tools have made a big difference in your time management? Absolutely. The structure they provide is invaluable. I feel more in control of my time and it's easier to keep track of deadlines. Without these tools, I'd probably struggle to stay organized, especially when juggling multiple projects. Do you feel the same way? Definitely. Having tools that streamline planning and task management allows me to focus on what really matters. It's not just about saving time, it's about using time more effectively. These tools can be game changers for anyone looking to improve their time management skills. Staying motivated is a key part of maintaining effective time management over the long term. It's easy to stick to a plan for a few days, but sustaining that focus can be challenging. How do you stay motivated, Jennifer? For me, staying motivated is all about connecting my daily tasks to my long-term goals. When I remind myself why I'm doing something, it helps me push through even when I don't feel like it. I also set small rewards for myself, like taking a short break or treating myself to something nice when I've completed a big task. How do you keep yourself motivated, Thomas? 
I think your point about connecting tasks to long-term goals is crucial. I do something similar where I visualize the bigger picture and how completing today's work moves me closer to those larger goals. I also find that tracking my progress is motivating. Seeing how far I've come makes it easier to keep going, especially when things get tough. Do you track your progress as well? Yes, I do. I keep a simple progress log where I note down completed tasks and achievements. It's a great way to remind myself of the progress I've made, even on days when I don't feel particularly productive. It also helps in maintaining a positive mindset, which is key to staying motivated long term. That's a great strategy. Keeping a sense of forward momentum really helps in maintaining discipline and enthusiasm over the long haul. Managing multiple priorities can be one of the toughest parts of time management. How do you prioritize tasks when everything feels important, Thomas? That's definitely a challenge. I use a method called the Eyes and Hour Matrix, which helps me sort tasks into four categories: urgent and important, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and neither urgent nor important. It's a simple but effective way to focus on what truly matters. What's your approach to managing multiple priorities? I've used the Eisenhower matrix too. I also make use of deadlines to prioritize. If something has a tight deadline, it naturally moves to the top of my list. But beyond that, I ask myself which tasks will have the biggest impact on my goals. Sometimes it's not about what's most urgent, but what will bring the most value in the long run. How do you handle tasks that aren't urgent but still important? That's where time blocking comes in handy for me. I set aside dedicated time for those important but not urgent tasks, so they don't get neglected. If I don't schedule them in advance, they often get pushed aside by more pressing things. Have you found any strategies to be particularly effective for balancing multiple projects? Yes, time blocking is great. I also like to batch similar tasks together. If I have multiple tasks that require focused work, I'll group them into one block of time. It's a way to stay efficient and reduce the mental switching between different types of work. It really helps when juggling several projects at once. That's a smart approach. Grouping similar tasks helps streamline workflow and keeps things moving efficiently. Procrastination is something we all struggle with from time to time. It's one of the biggest obstacles to effective time management. How do you combat procrastination, Jennifer? I used to procrastinate a lot, but now I use a technique called the two-minute rule. If something takes less than two minutes, I do it right away. For bigger tasks, I break them down into smaller, less intimidating pieces. Once I've started, I usually find it easier to keep going. How do you overcome procrastination, Thomas? I've found that simply starting is the hardest part. So I use a trick where I tell myself I'll just work on something for five minutes. More often than not, once I start, I end up working much longer. It's about getting past that initial resistance. Do you have any tips for avoiding distractions, which are often linked to procrastination? I do something similar. I also turn off notifications and put my phone in another room when I'm working on something important. It helps eliminate the temptation to check social media or emails. Having a dedicated workspace that's free from distractions makes a huge difference too. How do you handle distractions? I agree. Removing distractions is key. I also schedule specific times to check emails and messages so they don't interrupt my flow throughout the day. It's about creating an environment that's conducive to focus and minimizing opportunities for procrastination. With so many people working remotely now, time management has taken on new challenges. What's been your experience with managing time while working from home, Thomas? It's definitely been an adjustment. One thing that's helped me is setting clear boundaries between work time and personal time. I also stick to a consistent routine, starting and ending my work day at the same times each day. It creates a sense of structure, which can be harder to maintain in a remote environment. 
How have you managed time while working from home? Jennifer. I've had a similar experience. I find that creating a separate workspace is essential for maintaining focus. When I'm in that space, it's work time. When I leave, it's personal time. Another thing that's helped is maintaining my usual work routines as much as possible, like taking breaks at the same times I would if I were in an office. Have you faced any specific time management challenges while working remotely? Yes. One of the biggest challenges has been the blurring of boundaries between work and personal life. It's easy to let work spill over into evenings or weekends when you don't have a clear separation. That's why I've made it a point to shut down my computer and step away from work at a set time each day. It's been crucial for maintaining a healthy work-life balance. That's a great strategy. Without boundaries, it's easy to feel like you're always on, which leads to burnout. Time management in a remote setting requires even more discipline and planning than in a traditional office environment. Another key aspect of effective time management is delegation. We often think we need to do everything ourselves, but that's not always the most efficient use of our time. Do you delegate tasks, Thomas? Absolutely. Delegation is essential, especially when you're managing multiple projects. By assigning tasks to others, I can focus on the things that require my attention and expertise. It also helps prevent burnout. Do you find delegation challenging? It can be difficult to trust others with important tasks, but I've learned that delegation isn't about giving up control, it's about empowering others to take responsibility. It frees up time for me to work on more strategic or creative tasks. Do you have any tips for effective delegation? One tip is to be clear about expectations and outcomes when delegating tasks. It's important to communicate what needs to be done and provide the necessary resources for others to succeed. It also helps to check in regularly without micromanaging. Have you noticed any benefits from delegating tasks in your work? Definitely. It's made me more productive and less stressed. I can focus on high-priority tasks, knowing that other responsibilities are being handled by capable team members. A lot of people overlook self-care when it comes to time management. But taking care of yourself is just as important as getting things done. How do you balance self-care with managing your time, Jennifer? I've learned that if I don't take care of myself, my productivity suffers. So I make it a point to schedule time for things like exercise, reading, or just relaxing. It recharges my energy and helps me stay focused throughout the day. How do you incorporate self-care into your schedule? I do something similar. I make sure to take short breaks during the day, and I also set aside time in the evenings for hobbies or spending time with family. It helps me maintain a good work-life balance, which is crucial for long-term productivity. Do you ever find it hard to make time for self-care? Sometimes, especially when work is busy. But I've realized that self-care isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. Without it, I can't perform at my best, and my work suffers as a result. It's important to remember that taking care of yourself is part of managing your time effectively. We've covered a lot of ground today, from setting priorities and using tools to managing remote work and self-care. Time management is truly about finding what works best for you and adjusting as needed. It's not about being perfect, but about making progress. Any final thoughts, Thomas? I completely agree, Jennifer. Time management is a lifelong skill that we all continue to develop. The key is to be flexible and willing to adapt as your life and responsibilities change. Don't be afraid to try new techniques and adjust your approach when needed. And remember, small changes in how you manage your time can lead to big improvements in your productivity and overall well-being. Exactly, and for our listeners, we hope that today's episode has given you some useful insights and strategies that you can apply in your own life. Whether you're managing a busy work schedule, juggling multiple priorities, or simply looking to improve your productivity, there's always room for growth. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and found it helpful.
Remember, time management isn't just about doing more, it's about doing what matters most. Until next time. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in the next episode. And in the meantime, take control of your time, stay productive, and don't forget to take care of yourself along the way.